Today, I'm going to show you how to create an incredible tomato soup right at home. Along the way, we'll dive into the science behind the ingredients and how they work together to build flavor. I'll also share tips on making this your own so you can experiment and craft a version that's uniquely yours. Let's start with our vegetables. Because we're cooking at home, there are no rules to what you can throw in your pot. I'm just using vegetables that I have in my fridge. First up, Roma tomatoes. These are ideal for soup because they're meatier, have fewer seeds, and their natural acidity gives the soup a balanced hang. We're about to roast them to concentrate their sugars and to bring out their deep sweetness. Celery is a vegetable that adds aromatics, giving the soup a fresh scent that ties everything together. Carrots have a nice flavor, but the beauty with them comes during the blending process. They add a creamy, velvety texture that eliminates the need to add cream. I'm using a shallot because I have it in my fridge, and this might seem fancy, but it's just a milder cousin of the onion. When roasted, it develops a mellow, almost creamy flavor that adds depth without being overpowering to the soup. Next, I'm going to add a red bell pepper. This might seem strange, but it does play a nice role in tomato soup, even though it's not 100% necessary. The red color of the bell pepper intensifies the soup's natural hue, which makes it more appealing. When roasted, red bell peppers provide a smooth texture that enhances the mouthfeel, and the pepper's natural pectin helps thicken the soup as well. Next, the vegetables get tossed in oil, salt, and pepper. The oil plays an important part as it assists in the mild reaction and is responsible for getting us the caramelized edges on the vegetables. Salt amplifies the natural flavors in the vegetables, additionally drawing out moisture to assist in roasting and ensuring they don't get steamed. A small amount of black pepper adds a hint of heat, adding that extra element. Now we're ready to roast. Roasting for an hour at 400 degrees Fahrenheit deepens the flavors and gives them a hint of smokiness, richening the base for our soup. When the vegetables come out of the oven, we're going to throw them in a pot, which gives us an opportunity to make adjustments to seasonings and flavors. Garlic is a given in almost every soup. Garlic adds a savory, umami-rich base to the soup. When sautéed, it releases aromatic compounds that create nutty flavors. Next, I decide to use apple cider vinegar to add a bright tangy kick to my soup, helping balance the sweetness of roasted vegetables and the acidity of the tomatoes. This actually makes it not so rich and helps bring all the flavors together. But don't be afraid to experiment. You can swap out apple cider vinegar for balsamic or red wine vinegar for different results. Balsamic vinegar will bring a touch of sweetness, while red wine vinegar adds a sharp tang. You can also add spices at this stage, like a pinch of smoked paprika for depth or a dash of crushed red pepper for a hint of heat. This is your opportunity to fine tune the flavors and make this soup truly your own. Tomato paste is a key ingredient here because it's packed with concentrated flavors. It also helps thicken the soup naturally. Now I add canned tomatoes, but not just any canned tomatoes. I look for either San Marzano or San Marzano style tomatoes. San Marzano tomatoes are the gold standard when it comes to making soup because of their superior flavor and texture. They're grown in the rich volcanic soil near Mount Vesuvius in Italy. These tomatoes are known for their low acidity, sweet flavor, and thick flesh. San Marzanos are perfect for soup while they provide a deeper, more robust tomato taste without being overly tart. Then we are going to thin this out with some chicken stock. And we are going to find a nice thick hearty bread such as a baguette, ciabatta, or even a rustic piece of sourdough that's laying around. And we're going to simmer this bread for 10 to 15 minutes. In this video I use ciabatta, but the purpose of the bread is that it absorbs the flavors of the soup, enhancing its depth. The bread easily blends into the soup and gives it a creamy consistency. This is a great way to thicken the soup without adding a roux or starch. Then you're gonna blend until it's smooth. Make sure you taste it at the end and add more salt if needed. And what goes better with a bowl of soup than a nice grilled cheese? Finally, to garnish the soup, you can add a splash of cream, croutons, or in my case, I'm going to add a swirl of olive oil, chili flake, and some freshly cut basil. There you have it, my take on a bowl of tomato soup on a nice chilly day at home. Hope you enjoy playing around with this recipe until you find a combination of flavors that you can call your own. 
As always, thanks for watching until the end, and I'll see you in the next video.